हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माय चैनल क्लिनिकल बायोकेमिस्ट्री बाय डॉक्टर पी के प्रभाकर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एनोदर इन बॉर्न इयर ऑफ मेटाबॉलिक डिसऑर्डर्स एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द आई ई एम इन बॉर्न इयर ऑफ मेटाबॉलिक डिसऑर्डर्स फ्रॉम द एमिनो एसिड पाथवे सो द फर्स्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द फिनाइल किटोनूरिया दिस इज वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट इन बॉर्न इयर ऑफ मेटाबॉलिज यू कैन कॉल इट सो दिस फिनाइल किटोनूरिया एट्स नेम सजेस्ट इट इज रिलेटेड टू फिनाइल एलानिन Now, first, before going to talk about the DGH, uh, we should see something about the phenylalanine. What is phenylalanine? So, phenylalanine it is in it is an amino acids, uh, which is an aromatic amino acid. So, phenylalanine in aromatic amino acid. Aromatic amino acid means if you see the structure of uh, phenylalanine, aromatic amino acid. so phenylalanine is having a structure is roughly this is the structure of phenylalanine and the different tyrosine amino acids structure is it is having oh group so this is the aromatic amino acids so both phenylalanine and tyrosine are the aromatic amino acids now another feature of this uh, phenylalanine tyrosine is phenylalanine is an essential amino acids phenylalanine is an essential amino acid essential amino acid means in our body we are unable to synthesize phenylalanine in our body so phenylalanine normally we takes uh, from the diet from the external sources but this tyrosine is the non essential amino acid so phenylalanine is in essential amino acids where tyrosine if you see it is in non essential amino acids now the function of phenylalanine in our body is only two function phenylalanine do first it either participate in protein synthesis it will give you protein synthesis or it will converted into converted into tyrosine so phenylalanine does not have any function phenylalanine perform only two function in our body one is it will participate in the protein synthesis and second it is converted into tyrosine so tyro conversion of phenylalanine to the tyrosine is by this process this is the mechanism by which it is converted into tyrosine so what is that chemical reactions by which it is going to be converted into tyrosine so phenylalanine is going to be converted into tyrosine by a specific enzymes that enzyme is called as phenylalanine hydroxylase this phenylalanine hydroxylase utilizes one of the oxygen molecules o2 and this oxygen utilizations and it also requires a cofactor that is called as tetrahydrobiopterin this tetrahydrobiopterin is going to be reduced so bh4 this is tetrahedro means four hydrogen this is dihydro means two hydrogen so this tetrahydrobiopterin is converted into dihydrobiopterin and two of the hydrogen will be used here from here so this two oxygen and two hydrogen from here so it will exit in the form of water and phenylalanine will will convert into tyrosine in our body we are having very limited stocks of tetrahydrobiopterin so we don't have very much tetrahydrobiopterin so that continuously this process is going on so what we have to do this process we have to recycle means we have used tetrahydrobiopterin here so uh, we have got dihydrobiopterin but for continuous running of this process we require this enzyme this by, uh, bh2 has to be converted back to bh4 so for that one we require a specific reactions for a specific reaction which is catalyzed by dihydrobiopterin reductase this process this conversion this recycling of bh2 to bh4 utilizes one of the very important cofactor of our body that is nadph this nadph again we don't have very much resources only few biochemical pathway we are having in our body which produces this nadph one of the important pathway which produces nadph is hnp sunt pathway this nadph is one of the important antioxidant component of our body which protect us from the free radical because it requires for the glutathione reductase reactions 
So, this NADPH will be used for the conversion of BH2 to BH4 by the enzyme dihydrobiopterin deductase and ultimately this NADPH will be converted back to NADP plus. So, ultimately we have got BH4. So, this reaction continuously going on. So, this is phenylalanine is converted to tyrosine and then it will be metabolized. So, either you are having only tyrosine in your body. So, it will be utilized or if you are taking phenylalanine by through the diet through different sources, this will also give you tyrosine and then it will be utilized. So, the function of phenylalanine is just converted into the tyrosine and then rest of the process will happen. Now, phenylalanine because we in our body we cannot synthesize it. So, that is why it is a essential amino acids, but tyrosine we gets from phenylalanine. So, that is why tyrosine becomes non essential amino acids. Now, in our diet, if directly I will get tyrosine, I do not if I am not getting going to get phenylalanine directly I am going to get tyrosine in my diet. So, what will happen? My requirement or my dependency on the phenylalanine is reduced. So, if we get directly tyrosine in our diet, so my dependency on this essential amino acid will be reduced. In that case, we do not at all require phenylalanine. This type of process, this is called as a sparing action of tyrosine over the phenylalanine. Means, if you are having sufficient amount of tyrosine by through the diet through other resources, then we do not require phenylalanine. Obviously, phenylalanine is an essential amino acid, but we do not require that one also. Why we do not require? Because we are having sufficient amount of tyrosine. This is called as a sparing action of tyrosine over phenylalanine. So, this is one thing. If you will see both phenylalanine and tyrosine, their metabolic processes, how they are going to metabolize. So, during their metabolic process, these are uh, both phenylalanine and tyrosine will give us acetoacetate uh, which ultimately gives us fat fat synthesis and it gives us fumarate which ultimately gives us it will be converted to glucose depending on body required requirement through gluconeogenesis process means both phenylalanine and tyrosines can give you glucose also and give you fat also. It can synthesize fat also, it can give you glucose also. So, both the enzymes are glucogenic and ketogenic both. So, it gives you both glucose and ketone body. We will see further when we will talk about tyrosine metabolic process, then we will see how this is going to give me acetoacetate and fumarate. Now, what is the use of this tyrosine in our body? What is the use of phenylalanine ultimately through tyrosine only? What is the use of this one? How it is going to be utilized? So, this tyrosine and phenylalanine gives us number of different important biomolecules. What are those biomolecules? It gives you epinephrine hormone. It gives you norepinephrine. It gives me dopa it gives me t3 t4 hormone it gives is melanin melanin is our body color depends on this melanin only so melanin is the color of our body means it is a color producing substance which gives me different color at the different like my hair color my eye color my skin color so all these depends on melanin so these are the important biomolecules which we get from this tyrosine and phenylalanine. Now, I have we have already seen how this phenylalanine is converted into tyrosine. So, if in case of phenylketonuria, this enzyme mainly or you can call it classical phenylketonuria which was originally it was discovered. So, that time this is the enzyme which is going to be defective. So, we do not have or we are having defective this this enzyme we are going to call PAH phenylalanine hydroxylase. So, this enzyme is defective. So, gene for this PH is we do not have we or it is a mutated genes. So, ultimately we do not have this reaction is going to happen. So, if this reaction will not happen then what will happen? Phenylalanine will not be converted into tyrosine. So, in that case if this reaction does not happen then phenylalanine is going to be accumulated in our body. So, accumulation of phenylalanine will be there. So, and that is a phenylketonuria. 
why that from where this term comes that we are going to come here so in that case if you do not have phenyl means uh, if you do not have this enzyme so phenylalanine will be accumulated and ultimately we will not get tyrosine also so then our dependency on tyrosine will be there if this defect is there means we are not getting tyrosine from the phenylalanine then this tyrosine which is normally non essential but in the case of phenylketonuria patient where this def this is defective enzyme then this tyrosine which is non essential amino acid it becomes essential why it becomes essential because this enzyme does not works and it this this enzyme does not work means we are not having phenylalanine gives me tyrosine so then we are having a limited resource of tyrosine so tyrosine becomes essential in that case now when this phenylalanine is accumulated in our body so this is the biochemical pathway of phenylalanine conversion to tyrosine now we'll see when phenylalanine is accumulated in our body then what is the complications what is going to happen so first we are having phenylalanine in our body phenyl alanine so this is a uh, aromatic amino acid which normally accumulated in body normally metabolic process of this one is this is going to be converted into tyrosine by a pah enzyme but in case of phenylketonuria this is defective so we are having accumulated uh, sufficient amount or more amount of phenylalanine is in our body so this accumulated amount of phenylalanine is going to be converted into a diverted pathway a different kind of metabolic pathway where it is going to be utilized so one of the pathway is phenylalanine is going to be converted into phenyl pyruvate so this is going to be converted into phenyl pyruvate by a enzyme transaminase by a enzyme transaminase it is converted into phenyl pyruvate this is a keto acid this phenyl pyruvate is having normally two pathway it is going to be divided into two different pathway in one pathway another pathway both pathway is going to use NADH so this pathway phenyl pyruvate is converted into phenyl acetate and phenyl lactate so here it is going to be converted to phenyl acetate and here it is going to be converted to phenyl lactate this is also a keto acid this is also a keto acid now both the reactions this reactions uses nadh this is going to use nadh it will give you plus h plus it will be converted into nad plus and in this case it is going to use nad plus reverse so it is here it is going to use nad plus and convert it back to nadh plus h plus so once we are having accumulated amount of phenyl alanine in our body so this phenyl alanine is going to be diverted into different other pathway through those pathway ultimately it is going to give me different kind of metabolites what are those metabolites they are going to give me phenyl pyruvate they are going to give me phenyl acetate they are going to give me phenyl lactate and all are keto acids so in our case in case of this phenyl ketonuria where this enzyme is defective we are having accumulation of or in our body we are having accumulation of keto acid and which type of keto acid all are phenylic so we are having phenyl keto acids is accumulated in our body so normally the phenyl ketonuric patients is having in their urines they are having phenylalanine they are having phenyl pyruvate they are having phenyl acetate they are having phenyl lactate so these compounds normally present in their urines and all are phenyl keto acids so that's why from there it only this terms come there phenyl ketonuria means phenyl means phenylic groups keto means ketonic acids keto acids and urea means it is in the presence in the urine so this phenyl ketonuria words come from this pathway only where accumulated product of phenylalanine is going to be 
excreted through the urine in different uh, means through the urine now because of this keto acids only especially the maximum content we are having in our uh, urine is phenyl pyruvate and because of that one because of this keto acids the urine color is uh, so urine smell is moisty smell means moss like smell so the moisty smell of urine is because of this phenyl keto acids Sorry. Now, so what will happen? How this is? So this is uh, because these are water soluble, so it can be excreted from our body. But this is going to cause different kind of defects in our body. If we are having this enzyme is defective, so we are having a more amount of phenylalanine, more amount of phenyl keto acids. How it is going to affect our normal physiology? Because of this one, we are having different kind of abnormality, different kind of defects. We are having uh not able to uh, walk properly not able to talk properly we are having uh, seizures uh, tremors so all the things mental retardations mental retardations in this case we are having iq level is almost equal to less than 50 so that is these are the things which is going to happen but why this is going to happen so we will say so these are the different kind of sign and symptoms but why this happens uh, so if you'll see the structure of there are uh, you know that the, we are having three aromatic amino acids in our body we are having phenylalanine tyrosine and tryptophan so these are the three aromatic amino acids so means their structure is almost same they are structurally similar compounds so because we are having more amount of phenylalanine in our body so these more amount of phenylalanine reaches to the brain so what happens this extra amount of phenylalanine normally affects the transportation or the metabolism of other meta other aromatic amounts like this phenylalanine tyrosine is almost related so this phenylalanine accumulated amount of phenylalanine is going to affect the transportation and the metabolic process of tryptophan in our brain so what will happen and tyrosine also because uh, we don't have tyrosine also so phenyl phenylalanine affects the metabolic process of other aromatic amino acids so that defect so what when we, we are unable to metabolize tryptophan so whatever usage of tryptophan will be there that is going to be affected that is going to be hampered so because of that one may, uh, brain mental retardation will be there and once this will be accumulated in our tissue it is going to damage our nerve cells nervous systems so neurons will be damaged and because neuron will be damaged so mentally retarded people will be there second is this uh, phenylalanine normally is going to be competitive uh, if you know that tyrosine tryptophan gives us by decarboxylation process it gives us serotonin 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 is a neurotransmitter it is a neuro transmitter and which type of neurotransmitter it is it is excitatory neurotransmitter so tryptophan normally gives us serotonin and that is working as a neurotransmitter but because we are having higher amount of phenylalanine in our body so this high amount of phenylalanine competitively inhibits this process conversion of tryptophan to serotonin so this serotonin to uh, tryptophan to serotonin conversion is also going to be hampered going to be slowed down because of high level of phenylalanine so we don't have too much amount of serotonin synthesis in our body in our brains in our nervous system so that is also going to affect the nerve conduction nerve signaling processes other than this one this phenylalanine also affect the myelin sheath formation myelin sheath formation what is this myelin sheath this myelin sheath is uh, normally we are having nerve cells and in the nerve cells uh, it is covered nerve cells are covered with the lipid membrane so if you will see this is our nerve cell this is axons so this axon is covered with the lipid layer and this lipid layer is called as myelin sheath this is our myelin sheath the function of this myelin sheath is normally it works as a insulator so this is a insulator 
and this insulator does not allow the action potential to leak out. So, the whatever action potential will start from here, it will completely reach to the next synapses. So, myelin sheath normally works as insulator which does not allow to leaking of the any kind of action potential, but the accumulated amount of phenylalanine is going to affect the myelin sheath formation. So, when myelin sheath will not form, so the action potential movement transportation is going to be affected. This is so, these are the different kind of defect. One more defect uh, which is caused because of this, uh, because of this phenylalanine accumulation is, it is going to leads to hypopigmentation. Hypopigmentation. I have told you one of the main, one of the function of phenylalanine and tyrosine is, it gives me, it produces melanin. Melanin is nothing, it is a color producing com compound of our body which produces the color of our skins, color of our skin uh, means eye, color of our hairs. So, when we do not have uh, means tyrosine, means this phenylalanine is not converted into tyrosine and tyrosine will be used for melanin formation. But because this phenylalanine is going to be not converted into tyrosine, so no melanin synthesis will be there. When we do not have melanin synthesis, so obviously the pigment pigmentation in our body is going to be affected. So, different places like skins, eye will having less pigmentations. So, this is the complications which is caused during the phenylketonuria. Now, if you will see how it is going to be treated means diagnosed. So, there are two tests by which we can diagnose phenylketonuric patients. One is confirmatory test, other one is non-confirmatory test. Uh, which is a, a non specific test. So, the confirmatory test which can we can call it that is called as Guthrie test. So, we are talking about diagnosis. So, Guthrie test. This is a test uh, which is normally to the, you, we are going to use a bacteria that is Bacillus subtilis. So, this Guthrie test is a bacterial bioassay for the phenylalanine where we are going to use bacteria bacillus subtilis. This test is performed after the baby, once baby will be feeded with um, breast milk for a couple of days, then we are going to perform this test. In India or in uh, most of the country, normally we are not going to perform this test, but if you go to USA, this Guthrie test or the test for phenylketonuria. PKU in short form we are going to call it PKU. So, in USA this phenylketonuria test is almost compulsory for every baby birth. After the birth they are go, they have to go for phenylketonuria test. So, this is a test by which we can perform it. So, second test we are having that is called as ferric chloride test. Ferric chloride test. This test is a chemical test uh, which is normally based on the benzene ring phenylic benzene ring group. So, if any other compound also will be there which is having a benzene ring that will give me this positive test. So, this positive this test is normally not very specific only for the phenylalanine, but for other compound also gives a positive test. So, this is not a very specific test, but this test is a, a specific test which we are going to perform for phenylalanine. What is the treatment? What is the management of uh, this hope to avoid phenylalanine? So, we do not have too much of uh, man treatments. Uh, the thing is, we have to avoid the pers means person who is having phenylketonuria. If you come to know, a uh, person should be avoided any food which contains phenylalanine. So, normally, phenylalanine deficient foods they will be given, and in that case, they have they are dependent on tyrosine for most of their functions, which phenylalanine has to do. So, in that case, their tyrosine will be essential amino acids and person has to eat, has to take tyrosine in their food regularly. This is uh, the phenylketonuria which commonly occurs and because it is autosomal recessive disease. So, more like uh, most of the inborn error metabolism, this is also autosomal recessive. Its inheritance is autosomal recessive means in the offspring we require both the allele from father also. So, from one allele from father, one allele from mother side. So, one both allele will be there. 
then only the disease will occur otherwise if in case of heterozygous conditions the disease will be person will be concerned baby will be only uh, carrier he will not have any kind of disease so for to disease to be expressible person needs both the allele from both the parents so because of this autosomal recessive conditions its occurrence is roughly 1 in every 10000 birth so occurrence is uh, Com compared to other involuntary metabolism, its occurrence, occurrence is little bit higher side. So this is all about phenylketonuria. Uh, next day we will talk about uh, other disease, other involuntary metabolism. Mainly we will talk about L-captonuria. So hope you have understand it. If you have any query, any comments, you can write in the comment box. If you are not subscribed my channel, please subscribe it. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.